There are essentially two different ways to play Minecraft on the Quest 2. One that uses a PC and one that doesn't. I'm gonna show you how to set both of them up and some gameplay so you can see the differences, plus a third defunct method that's not publicly available that does some powerful things and allows you to do some crazy stuff in Minecraft. Let's get started right now. First up, let's talk the standalone version. Now you are gonna need a PC of some kind, laptop, desktop. It doesn't have to be new, it doesn't even have to be powerful, but you are gonna need a PC to hook your Quest to. The first thing you're gonna need to do is enable developer mode. To do that, go to the link in the description to the Oculus developer website and sign up for a developer account. All you have to do is make sure you're logged into your Quest account on the page and create a new organization by filling in the organization name, ticking the box that you understand and creating the organization. You can call it whatever you want. The point is to make sure you create a new organization. Once that's done, all you have to do is go into the MetaQuest app on your phone, go into the settings menu, click on the devices button, and then make sure that your Quest is nearby and it says connected in the application. Scroll down to the headset settings, hit developer mode, and then make sure that the switch is flipped over to on. That's pretty much it for getting developer mode working. The next step is to download SideQuest onto whatever PC you're using. Now remember, it doesn't need to be a gaming PC. So what you're gonna do is go to the link in the description and download the SideQuest easy install version. Then you're gonna connect your Quest to your PC using a USB-C cable. Make sure you put your headset on and authorize and allow inside of the headset to allow your PC to access the files on your Quest. Then you're gonna go find the installer that you downloaded. Open the installer on the PC for SideQuest and you should see a button that says install SideQuest on your headset. Wait for the confetti to fly and you'll know that SideQuest is now installed on your headset. Now before you put your headset on, make sure you sign up for a SideQuest account first because that will make the next step a little bit easier. Once you're signed up for a SideQuest account, it's time to put on the headset. Put on your Quest 2 and navigate to the Unknown Sources tab in your library window. You do that by clicking the little button in the top right hand corner and then moving down at the drop down menu to the bottom that says Unknown Sources. Next, click on the SideQuest application. Once SideQuest opens up on your Quest 2, you will see a link which is sdq.st slash link. Go to that link on a computer or a phone or you can do it inside of the headset on a meta browser if you'd like. And then you're gonna log into SideQuest at that link and enter the six digit code you can see on the screen. Once the account is linked, you now can browse SideQuest inside of your headset. So you're gonna go to the search bar and you're gonna type in a program called QuestCraft. Once you find QuestCraft, you're gonna go ahead and hit download app. It'll show sideload. You're gonna hit that button. It'll download and sideload the QuestCraft application. Once it's downloaded and installed, all you have to do is navigate back to the unknown sources tab in your library and find QuestCraft. Go ahead and click on QuestCraft and allow any boxes that pop up. This will bring you to a Minecraft loader. Spoiler alert, sorry, you do actually have to own Minecraft and log in with your Microsoft account to make this work, but you can always get Microsoft Game Pass because it does include access to that game. You're gonna click on the Microsoft Login button. It's gonna give you a code that you have to go to a website and enter. You'll then enter that code in that website, log into your Microsoft account, and then go back into the headset. Once you're back in the headset, you can hit Microsoft Login. It'll probably give you a dialogue that says something like, please wait to click the button again until all the downloads are done. Once those downloads stop on the bottom, You'll notice that there's no more text in the bottom. All you gotta do is hit the login Microsoft button and it'll start to load. Now, the first time I did this, it took about 60 seconds. It's gonna get a black screen. You'll get a black screen for 60 seconds approximately while it loads all the files. Subsequently, each time it took like 30 seconds. So it did take less after that initial load in. But once it loads in, you'll see the Minecraft menu system. You can then choose to set up your new world and play survival or creative or whatever you would normally do in a normal Minecraft game. Now, there are some settings that I found making adjustments to make the game run a little bit better because the draw distance isn't really that long and depending on what's on screen, it can make it so that it kind of jitters and stops a little bit, but you can get it running pretty darn smoothly. And I'll show you those settings when we jump into some gameplay a little bit later. But first, let's check out how to play this on a PC if you've got a gaming PC and you want the optimal version of Minecraft in VR. This method is gonna require the Java version of Minecraft. So you're gonna need the Java version of Minecraft installed first. Again, Microsoft Game Pass is great for this because it's included. Now now with the game pass. So once you've got Minecraft installed on your PC, you need to launch the Minecraft launcher at least one time before you do this. So launch the launcher and then make sure it is totally closed out. Then you're gonna go to the link in the description to get Vivecraft. 
go to the download button and download the most recent version of Vivecraft. Once you've got it downloaded, open up that file and it's going to run you through the process of installing Vivecraft. Then you're gonna open up the Minecraft launcher and in the drop down menu, make sure it says Vivecraft is the version you're going to play. Now it's time to put on your headset and use your favorite method to play PC VR, whether it's link cable, air link, or virtual desktop. I use air link, so I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the bottom bar, click on my desktop viewer and click on the run button or the play button to open up Vivecraft. That'll launch you right into Vivecraft. And from there, you're gonna just set up your Minecraft game and you could change some settings if you'd like in the game. This is my personal personal favorite method for the gameplay style and what you can do with mods and stuff for Minecraft. So if you have a gaming PC, this is the best way to play it. But we'll jump into some gameplay in a few minutes and I'll talk about why that is. First though, let's talk about that third defunct method that you can no longer use to actually play Minecraft in VR and why it's so powerful. You see, Oculus used to have Minecraft on their store in the PC VR store. It's no longer there. You cannot find it there. You cannot access it. And if you search in Google for it, it'll just bring you to a page that says wish list. You cannot get it anymore. If you had it previously, you could still access it, but the only way to do that is not by searching, it's by going into your library and scrolling down. And let me tell you why that is so powerful. The reason is because this uses the Bedrock version of Minecraft. There's some gameplay elements that aren't my favorite when it comes to Bedrock in VR, but there are some things that far outweigh that, and that includes playing some of the amazing content that they release on the marketplace in VR, including things like Jurassic World, Disney World, the new Mega Man one you could play in VR, the Sonic one. There's a lot of amazing stuff that people build and put in the marketplace in the Bedrock version of Minecraft, and it's all playable in VR. We're gonna jump in and I'll show you one a little bit later, but first let's jump backwards and we'll play some of the native Quest 2 version and show you the optimal settings to use to make it work the best. All right, we're in the menu system here of the standalone version for the Quest VR version of Minecraft Quest Craft. I've got a couple of worlds here that I've messed around with in this most recent install. We're gonna create a new one. You can hit create new world, then you can go in and you can change it. You could rename it if you want to. It actually has a keyboard you can type on, which is kind of cool. We'll just keep it all standard. We're gonna hit create world. All right, here we are. We've loaded into a desert biome, which is uh, probably a good thing. Sometimes with the larger biomes, with the more stuff going on, it actually can stutter a little bit more, especially when you're recording. It's not so bad if you're not recording, but if you're seeing any stuttering right now, a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that I am recording. I've got certain settings on right now for the chunk sizes and everything. Let me just show you what I have for settings. I played around a little bit with it. So what I have right now under video settings, I've got three chunks for render distance and five chunks for simulation distance, which is the lowest that you can get. The other things I have are I put leaves at fast quality instead of on default. I think fancy might be a default, so I just put it at fast. Then I also put particles at, instead of minimal, I put it at decreased, which says it has a medium impact. It seemed to work a little bit better when I did that, but it's actually surprisingly running really smooth right now, smoother than even normal when I'm recording, which is awesome. You can teleport by hitting the X button, so there is teleportation in this game. It's also got all the settings that you'll see, or a lot of them you'll see in Vivecraft for VR settings, locomotion settings and stuff. So like you can have walk up on blocks on, vehicle rotation on. In order to dig blocks or break up blocks, you're gonna hold down the trigger and point at it. You can see the little reticle there. This is a very challenging biome to start off in because there's no trees. <laughs> so I, I think I've got like the worst biome to start in. Maybe I should just go underground or go in the water and die or something. But this gives you at least an idea, a little bit of what Vivecraft can do. Let's go in the water so you can kind of see how things look in the water. Whoa, they look nice and colorful in the water. Wow, look at that, that looks great. I wonder if you could swim. Can you, oh, you can swim that way. It does have immersive swimming on, okay. I wasn't sure if it did or not. Okay, that's cool. Oh, let's go over here, there's the grass over here. We might be in a new biome over here. Oh, crap. Ugh, there we go. There we are at a new biome. Let's just go over here. We're just gonna stay at the top of the water by jumping. Oh, it's an island. Oh, look, there's a tree right there. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this actually allows for physical swinging. I, I know Vivecraft used to. Let's see if we can build something really quick here. Let's place this crafting box. I need to take one off of here. There's the axe. I knew it was one of those things. Okay, finally, my freaking word. Okay, so you can physically chop things. That's one of my favorite parts about Vivecraft is that you can physically chop stuff. There we go, see? There, it does. It has 
immersive uh, chopping and fighting and stuff. So if you have a sword, for instance, you can physically hit with the sword. I'm gonna get you. Gotcha! I freaking killed him. Oh, look at those beautiful things down there. Hold on, let me get some air and see what's down here. Those are sea cucumbers, right? They're gonna cross a really cool area. Uh, underwater actually renders better than above water, which is kind of weird. Well, we're staring, still in a desert biome. We're about to get overrun by lots of evil things. So, I'm gonna call it quits here. <laughs> Let's jump over and check out Vivecraft, and I'll show you why that's my favorite version of Minecraft in VR. All right, welcome to Vivecraft. As you can see, there is quite a big difference between this version of Minecraft <laughs> and the mobile one from like a chunk standpoint especially, like you can see a lot farther away. See the fog way out there, and uh, the skybox is way better, it has clouds and everything. This is my personal favorite version of Minecraft to play in VR, because, not just because of this, but because you can actually add custom mods to it. That's one of my favorite things to do. This just looks beautiful, and I've got it on kind of like fancy graphics and stuff, just because I wanted to uh, show you how the game looked. Oh, I'm gonna fall, ooh. And just like with the mobile version that we just showed you, you can physically hit things in this game. And I've got the same skin because it's attached to the same Java account. Let's see, there's some pumpkins over here. All right, hi duckies. Scale seems to be a little bit better in this as well. So you can break up things with your hands, which is pretty cool. You know, if you just swing your hands at it. One of my favorite things to do is get a sword and just go hunting at night. For some reason, I'm getting some massive hitches with Steam VR here. I don't know what that is. It's never done that for me before. You're probably seeing it on screen. This is the one negative of it using Steam VR. Um, for some reason, it doesn't work all the time with AirLink. So if you want it to work perfectly, ooh, look at, I don't know if you can see the glitching. It's getting really bad now. Uh, then I would use Virtual Desktop. Then that works a lot better when it comes to Steam VR stuff because it it operates like a just a regular Steam VR headset. Nothing in there. I was hoping there was a zombie or something in there. And then you don't have to worry about it trying to run both Steam and the Oculus runtimes, which might be what's causing this. I don't know. I don't know what I have open my, on my PC. I might have my editor open still to and everything. <laughs> but this will give you an idea of kind of what Vivecraft is. Not a very good one because it's not looking very good, but it is. Uh, it's really my favorite version because of everything you can do. Holy crap, this is getting really bad. All right, I'm gonna have to duck out of this because this is starting to make me actually sick. Um, so I would recommend using virtual desktop. That's what I've always done when I've done Minecraft, but I wanted to try using <laughs> Oculus. <laughs> and AirLink is just not, it's just not legging it. Let's jump over and we'll check out the other version that actually uses the Oculus runtimes, and that is the Bedrock version. And I'll show you why, even though it's not usable by most people, it is amazing and has some really cool stuff. Let's go check it out. All right, welcome to the Windows 10 version of Minecraft. And this right here is the reason that I think this is amazing. And it all has to do with these crazy things that you can download from the marketplace. Batman, Mega Man X, Pac-Man, you got Angry Birds, Ben 10. I tried Ben 10, we own that one. It didn't really work because of the way that they designed the aliens. What I want to do though is I want to try the Minecraft Jurassic World in VR on PC. It's gonna be amazing, I think. Uh, we'll just do survival is the way it's supposed to be done. We'll do create, and we're gonna jump in and we'll see what Jurassic World looks like in VR in Minecraft. I've done Disney in the past, which is incredible going through Disney World in virtual reality. This is really the magic of this version of Minecraft, and I wish that they made it way easier for people to actually use. All right, so this is where you start off. It looks weird, right? You're like, this isn't VR, this is sitting on a VR couch. But if you hit the Y button, it puts you in immersive mode. There we go. And now, we really are in Minecraft, which is pretty awesome. Now we're on Isla Nublar. Let's go up here. We're gonna go on the tram or the monorail. Now this can be a little sickening <laughs> in VR because it doesn't turn with you. It actually uh, doesn't turn your body with this, which it can get kind of sickening, but this is, uh, it's really cool. And it's actually pretty smooth when you're going on like a tram or a trolley or something. And if, as long as you turn your head with it, it's not too bad. Do, 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 Jurassic World. Welcome to Jurassic World. The Mosasaurus tank over there. 
Uh, you can go visit the T-Rex. I kind of want to do all these things. But we're not going to spend a lot of time in here. I just wanted to show you why this is amazing. See, look. Mosasaurus Stadium. Can I get out of this yet? Oh, I can. Okay. Ready? Good. Hello, Mosasaurus! Oh, man, it won't let me in. <laughs> Let's go over and get some food, shall we? I want some food from a food vendor. Hi there, vendor. Let's get a disaster dog. That sounds good. Yum, disaster dog. It's pretty amazing. Like, you wouldn't think Minecraft would be super immersive because of its, you know, it's blocky, but it is. It's just, it's so cool to play Minecraft with these different places. Look, a Spinosaurus. Oh, this is the T-Rex area down here. Here we go. Oh boy, you hear that? You can actually go in there. You can kind of break in. Ooh, you hear it? Where is it? Oh, there you are. Hi, T-Rex. T-Rex, where are you? I want to be able to go find you. Hello. We're going to let the T-Rex out, okay? Oh, 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 oh boy. <laughs> Hi, T-Rex. Will you get me? Will you attack me? Hi. Do you attack me? Hey, you do attack me! <laughs> Run! Oh, crap. <laughs> Run! <laughs> it's a freaking big T-Rex! <laughs> I don't like it eating to see what it does. Ready? Let's do it. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna be crazy. Eat me. Oh, you just attack me. Okay, that's all you do. Ha ah, ha! Punch the T-Rex! Punch the T-Rex! Punch the T-Rex! <laughs> Can I kill the T-Rex, I wonder? Well, there we go. This is Jurassic World on the Windows 10 version of Minecraft. Those are the three ways that you can try. Well, two ways you can try. One way that you, uh, unless you've played it before, you can't try virtual reality. Minecraft. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to watch another video, there's one right there on the screen. Stay safe and happy questing.